Hi, this is Brian Kim. I'm going to share with you case number 28 in the best way to do cataract surgery series. This is a dense lens and I'm going to show you systematic mechanical fracturing, double chop, cross chop. I'm going to show you how I'm able to use and leverage mechanical fracturing forces instead of using ultrasonic energy to break up the lens pieces, using the chopper to mobilize the lens pieces and trying to reduce zonular stress. And it's for these reasons, I feel like this is a safer and better way to do cataract surgery. So I'm gonna use a cotton tip to make the eye straight. And then I'm using a corneal marker, which will help me to center and size my rexus, using a cotton tip to turn the eye. And then I'm making my paracentesis incision flat to the iris plane, parallel to the iris plane. This ensures a nice self-sealing corneal incision. I'm going to inject some lidocaine intracamerally and then some dispersive viscoelastic. Using the cannula to hold the eye, and then I'm going to use my diamond blade to make a triplanar corneal incision. I make a vertical groove, tunnel into the depth of the groove, tunnel through the cornea, dive down, and then enter, and that's a triplanar incision. I'm going to use my rexus forceps to puncture the center of the capsule, pull downward, and then sweep a little bit to the right to create a small flap. Once I create that flap, I'm gonna use the corneal mark that I did before and try to use that to help me center and size my rexus. I'm trying to go around circumferentially, making sure that the diameter and circumference of the rexus is equal along the way and making sure that I'm centering and sizing the rexus over the corneal mark and then I burp the viscoelastic out of the eye. This is my capsule fornix hydrodissection technique, placing the cannula out to the contralateral equator underneath the anterior capsule lens surface. And then you point the tip downward and it causes a nice fluid wave to propagate. I decompress on the left side and I'm gently trying to turn the lens. And with some effort, it's finally free. I lift the incision, irrigate the cornea, and then with the irrigation off, I go in to minimize the SMA's trauma. I remove the surface epinuclear material, and then I begin to double chop maneuver. I place the chopper out underneath the epinuclear ridge, go out to the fornix with the chopper, go sub-incisionally with a finger tip, bring both the instruments together, and it crushes the lens in half. I place the chopper out to the contralateral equator, and that crushes the right heminucleus, that is the cross chop maneuver. I place the chopper out again underneath that first quadrant, crushing that lens between the chopper and the finger tip, start to crush that lens piece into smaller pieces, and then I'm beginning to emulsify the lens piece using the finger tip to grasp that second fragment, crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the finger tip, and then using high vacuum and a little bit of ultrasonic energy to remove the lens piece. I place the chopper out to the equator again for another cross chop maneuver, pulling the chopper towards the fig tip, crushing the lens material between the chopper and the fig tip. So I'm crushing that second quadrant in half. I place the chopper out again, place the chopper and the fig tip around that lens piece. Before doing that, I'm actually doing some more separation. And then I place the chopper out and then sandwich that fragment between the chopper and the fig tip. Again, I do the same maneuver, sandwiching the lens material between the chopper and the finger tip. And then once the lens pieces are small enough, I'm using high vacuum to grasp the lens piece and then crushing the lens piece into smaller pieces and then emulsifying it with a little bit of pulses of ultrasonic energy. You can see I'm using the chopper to crush the lens piece against the finger tip. And that's kind of the really the primary mechanism of action. I do move the finger tip to some degree, but it's really the chopper that's doing all the movements. I rotate the second heminucleus in front of me, place the chopper out to the equator, place the finger tip deep in the bag, crushing that second heminucleus in half, dividing the third and fourth quadrants, attacking the third quadrant, placing the chopper out to the equator again, placing the finger tip deep, crushing the lens piece in half by crushing the lens piece between the chopper and the finger tip. Again, crushing the smaller lens pieces between the chopper and the finger tip again, and then emulsifying the lens pieces with high vacuum and bursts of ultrasonic energy. So now I'm going to attack that fourth quadrant. You can see that the second quadrant isn't completely fractured and removed, so I'm going to get to that last. But this is the fourth quadrant placing the chopper out to the equator, crushing the lens between the chopper and the finger tip. You can see there are some leather adhesions. I'm just very carefully teasing them and separating them apart from one another. 
I'm placing the chopper out around that fragment, pulling it towards the fingertip and then crushing the lens using the fingertip almost like a cutting board for the chopper. I think that's a pretty good analogy. You wanna use the fingertip almost like a cutting board and the chopper is actually the knife. So you're actually using the chopper and crushing the lens against the fingertip. And so you're using the chopper as a primary instrument that's actually cutting the lens material. So you can see here again, I'm placing the chopper out to the equator, using the fingertip for support and counterforce. And as a chopper crushes the lens piece, it crushes it against that fingertip, tip, again, acting like a cutting board. So you can see the last fragment here, I'm placing the chopper around the lens piece, crushing it between it and the fingertip, tip, and then using high vacuum and ultrasonic energy. When you're on the last quadrant, you wanna be very careful you want to make sure you use mechanical fracturing forces, which reduces post-occlusion surge. It ensures that your chopper is deep between the bag and the phaco tip. Now all the endonucleus is removed. I'm going to start to remove the epinuclear material. You can see it tumbles out quite nicely. And I always make sure that my chopper is deep so that it protects the posterior capsule. I'm pushing BSS while I remove the Faco tip, and then I switch it to the INA tip. This reduces flattening the anterior chamber. I'm carefully removing the cortical material, but as you can see, there was not that much cortical material in the bag. And I'm switching to the polish mode. I'm polishing underneath the anterior capsule surface to remove any cortical material and lens epithelial cells. I had a little piece of endonuclear material and I just went out of the eye real quickly to evacuate it, rather than trying to crush it with a cannula. So I'm pushing BSS and I'm going to pulse the subincisional space using that burst of fluid. It can help liberate any material that's in the subincisional space. Inject some cohesive viscoelastic and then I'm starting to polish again the anterior capsular rim to make sure I can remove as much lens epithelial cells as possible. First I'm polishing on the left side and then I'm going to go ahead and polish on the right side as well. I'm going to go ahead and wind the incision because this is a three-piece intraocular lens and my incision is about a 2.6. I'm going to go in with the injector, bevel down. As the leading haptic is advanced, the bevel should be pointed towards the left and the haptic comes out planar. The optic should come out flat in the proper orientation and the trailing haptic swept to the right. And then I'm using a Maltzman to help deliver the trailing haptic and it dials in nicely. I'm going to use the INA handpiece to go underneath the lens first, remove any viscoelastic material from between the posterior capsule and the underside of the lens. And then I'm evacuating any viscoelastic material from within the anterior chamber. You want to get rid of all that dispersive viscoelastic out of the eye, especially in the angles. You can see that I've got a little nugget of endonuclear material again. Again, because of the density of the lens, it does cause some fragments to come out. You have to be very careful making sure you do a good cortical cleanup and viscoelastic cleanup. So I'm pushing BSS into the eye and coming out with the INA handpiece, and then I begin to hydrate my incisions. So again, you can see this is a typical dense cataract case for me. You can see it was very systematic, very straightforward, crushing the lens material between the chopper and the fake tip. I'm using the finger tip as a cutting board and the chopper is crushing the lens as if it's a knife against the cutting board, which is the finger tip. And that's the primary mechanism of mechanical fracturing. You saw a double chop and cross chop and how I'm able to fracture the lens very efficiently from two pieces and then into three pieces, utilizing 
fairly limited ultrasonic energy, being able to use the chopper to mobilize the lens pieces rather than using torsional stress on the zonules. You can see at the end of this case, this is a very clear cornea. The chamber was very stable throughout the case. The posterior capsule was not ever at risk because of these techniques. So I hope this was helpful to you. Please like and subscribe, and I thank you for your attention.